From Aaron Bushnell to I'm speaking in five months. I can't really find the words to express how depressing it is to watch the life get sucked out of the anti-genocide movement in the United States because one of the candidates running for president this year happens to come from the administration that's been overseeing said genocide. Kamala Harris shouted down protesters against the U.S.-backed incineration of Gaza during a campaign rally on Wednesday, responding to their chants of we won't vote for genocide by telling them they're helping Trump win. The Hill reports, quote, Demonstrators in the crowd at Harris's Detroit rally repeatedly shouted out as the vice president spoke to an airplane hangar packed with supporters, Kamala, Kamala, you can't hide, we won't vote for genocide. The crowd booed and drowned out the protesters with chants of Kamala. I'm here because we believe in democracy. Everyone's voice matters. But I am speaking now. I am speaking now, Harris said to applause. As protesters continued to interrupt, Harris delivered a more blunt warning. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that. Otherwise, I'm speaking, she said. End quote. The crowd thunderously applauded the comments from Harris. Social media is full of Democrats sharing the footage of the interaction and fawning over what a commanding girl boss she is. Like I said, depressing. Shortly after Biden withdrew from the race and endorsed Harris, I noted that we were already seeing some strong shut up, shut up, shut up about Gaza energy from Kamala supporters toward those on their left, and since that time, this phenomenon has been growing steadily worse. Now we've got this freakish dynamic where criticizing an administration that is guilty of the crime of genocide will get people telling you, hey, nobody's perfect, like it's some petty little quibble. And I can't help watching all this and wondering what Aaron Bushnell would think. On February 25th, Bushnell self-immolated in front of the Israeli embassy in Washington while screaming free Palestine to draw attention to the horrors his country was helping to inflict upon the people of Gaza. And now, the cause he gave his life for, in the most agonizing way possible, is being intentionally subverted by people who claim to care about justice and human rights. What would this look like to him? If, before igniting the accelerant, Bushnell had been granted a vision of Harris silencing anti-genocide protesters to the applause of her followers months in the future, would he still have gone through with it? Or would he have cast his lighter aside and collapsed in a fit of despair while Gaza burns, like the rest of us are doing right now? Five months. In a bit over five months, we went from seeing an active-duty airman light himself on fire to turn America's gaze toward Gaza, followed by a highly energized student protest movement against their country's facilitation of genocidal war crimes, to seeing those student protests crushed with the approval of the current president, and then his would-be successor telling anti-genocide protesters to shut the fuck up and fall in line so that Democrats can win. Every time a light gets sparked in the darkness, the Empire scrambles to snuff it out. Which wouldn't be so depressing if not for all the brainwashed masses falling all over themselves to help them do it. Oh well. The fight goes on. Even if these pricks are going to set the whole world on fire, we can still at least try to make it difficult for them.